Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about a Taylor series expansion of a general function f of x. And we said that we're expanding it about the point x is equal to a. And we found that if we want to approximate this function about this point, then our Taylor series expansion, f tilde of x, can be described as f evaluated at x is equal to a plus x minus a over 1 factorial times the derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to a plus x minus a squared over 2 factorial times the second derivative at x is equal to a and you can do that for as many terms all, as you need all the way up to x minus a to the nth power or big N over n factorial times the nth derivative of f evaluated at that point. And we talked about in the last video that although these derivative terms look nasty, um, essentially what you need to keep in mind is that when you take the derivative of a function, it's still going to be a function, and when you evaluate that function at a point, then it's just going to be a value. So this derivative evaluated something, that's just going to be a constant. And we talked about how these factorial terms are there for scaling purposes, and we talked about why we're using polynomials. Now, one thing which I forgot to mention in the last video is that you can actually neatly summarize all this information in series notation. Basically, we can say that our Taylor series approximation, we can rewrite that as the series, or the sum, of our index lowercase n is e equal to zero all the way up to capital N of x minus a to the n over n factorial times the nth derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to a. So what we're going to do in this video and the next video is coming are we're going to actually take a look at the Taylor series expansion of specific functions. And we're going to do interesting functions like e to the x or sine x or cosine x, etc. and see what they look like. Now the trick when you apply a Taylor series expansion to a function, the trick is actually just finding out what these derivative terms are evaluated at something. So that's what we're going to find out. So let's say that we have uh, let's say our function is f of x is equal to e to the x. And we're interested in this function, and we're going to expand it about the point x is equal to 0. Now, one quick aside. Uh, let's just rewrite what this Taylor series expansion is about x is equal to 0 instead of x is equal to a. We're going to get that f tilde of x is equal to the sum of n is equal to 0 to capital N. Instead of x minus a to the nth power, we're just going to have x to the nth power over n factorial times the nth derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to 0. Now this series, or, uh, or this expansion I should say, about x is equal to 0 has a specific name. When you evaluate a Taylor series about x is equal to 0, we call that the Maclaurin series. The Maclaurin. Hopefully I'm writing that pro properly. Now that's just one thing to keep in mind, but going back, let's now apply this Taylor series expansion, or Maclaurin series expansion, for our function e v x. Now, before we actually plug in anything, let's try and figure out what these derivative terms are ahead of time. So I'm just going to write this over in the side. So here we have f of x is equal to e to the x. So the first derivative, df dx, that should be equal to the derivative of e to the x. And if you're familiar with e to the x, you should remember that the derivative of e raised to the x is just e raised to the x. Which means that if we take the second derivative, that's just the derivative of this term. We can write f prime prime for a second derivative. 
that's also just going to be e to the x. Third derivative with respect to x is also just going to be e to the x. All the way up to like the nth derivative of x is also going to be e to the x. So now that we've figured out what the derivatives are, now let's see what they are, uh, are equal to when we evaluate them at x is equal to 0. So since all the derivatives are equal to e to the x, um, when we evaluate at e to the x at x is equal to 0, we get e to the 0 is equal, or anything to the 0 power is equal to 1, which means that if we evaluate our first, our first derivative at x is equal to 0, we get 1. If we evaluate the second derivative at x is equal to 0, we also get 1. If we evaluate all the higher derivatives at x is equal to 0, we get 1. Which means that all of these derivative terms, in this case, are just equal to 1 for e to the x. So what are we left with? We're left with, uh, let me write out here, we're left with our Taylor series approximation is equal to 1, our function evaluated at 0, plus x over 1 factorial, just x since 1 factorial is 1, times 1, plus x squared over 2 factorial times 1, plus x cubed over 3 factorial times 1, and so on and so forth. So we can say that the Taylor series approximation about or for e to the x about x is equal to 0, we can say that that is just 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial all the way up to x to the n over n factorial. And we can even write this with our fancy series notation as just the sum of n is equal to 0 to capital N of x to the n over n factorial. So that's our Taylor series approximation of e to the x. And with every additional term we add, we, get a, we approximate the function better and better and better and better. So one thing we can do is, what happens if we add just an infinite amount of term, terms? If we add an infinite amount of terms, the approximation gets so good, it's almost in indistinguishable from our original function. Which means, one thing we can say is, we can say, using our Taylor series approximation, we can say that e to the x, that could just be the, that's equal to the sum of n is equal to 0 to infinity, infinite sum of x to the n over n factorial. So we're able to find a new way to write our transcendental function e to the x. I think it's transcendental, not too sure. But although this doesn't really seem that important now, we're going to find some, we're going to derive some really interesting properties using this in a later video. But for, let's call it a day for now. In the next video, we're going to do this Taylor series expansion for another function. See you in the next video.